Yeah, first of all, I thank the organizers of uh, World Utility Summit for giving me opportunity to be here. When Mr. P. Umasankar, who had uh, been our leader in the power sector at the All India level, called me and said that, can you come and share your experience? And there was no way I can say no to him. That is why I'm here today. Um, uh, when we say this Gujarat power sector turnaround, I just like to show you this first, where we were some 10 years ago. In fact, in 2000, 2001, the laws of the Gujarat Electricity Board was 25 billion Indian rupees. That is 20, uh, 2,500 crores. Year after that, it was 6 billion rupees. After that, it was 5 billion rupees. Then it again went up in 2003-04, again to close to 20 billion rupees. That was the time when many far-reaching and uh, what shall I say, uh, effective measures were initiated. So in 2004-05, the laws were brought down to below 10 billion rupees. Then after that, there was no looking back. So our state sector, we are talking about the government sector power utilities here. We have private uh, utilities there. They have been doing well. Uh, in fact, possibly better than government utilities because of the uh, areas of operation, because they have the base of the base in the state as a distribution area, so we can't compare ourselves with them. Um, so how did this happen? Um, let me see before this, I'll just give you some brief information. Um, around the time we did this uh, restructuring, Gujarat had a peak deficit of around 20%. And we also used to have load shedding of four to six hours every day. So those were the uh, situation there also. And then the losses were around 34, 35%. So initiatives were taken. One of the far, most far-reaching measure was the Joytir Gram Yosna which was started in that this is basically a bifurcation of rural feeders into pure agriculture and the rest. Because Gujarat used to have a very significant agriculture consumption, even today it's around 30% of the annual energy consumption goes to agriculture. So when we have a common feeder and every agriculture consumer come onto the grid during daytime, the feeders get overloaded with all attendant problems. So there was no possibility of providing good quality power supply in rural areas. Urban areas were by and large fairly good around those days also. But mind you today, uh, we supply around 20, uh, 30 million units in dedicated rural feeders, another uh, uh, 30 million units in urban areas under the state sector, and agriculture supply these days is around 70 million units per day. And of course, industry is around 92 million units. That is the daily uh, consumption these days. Agriculture, though it is not a peak agriculture season, 70 million units per day, or 70 million units plus per day is significant. So therefore, when decision was done, it was basically to improve the quality of service so that at least for other than agriculture, for all other consumptive use, we should provide three-phase 24 by 7 power supply to people in rural areas also, villages everywhere. So that was the initiative taken. There were lots of apprehension, lots of opposition at that time. 
because farmers were apprehensive. Because decision was that they will get only eight hours supply. Three phase power supply will be provided to agriculture only for eight hours. It was a bold political step. Far uh, sightedness of the then political leadership because calculation was that this is going to be beneficial for the farmers and for the state. One was Gujarati's water deficient state, groundwater keep on going down, it was reaching an alarming stage by that time. So there is a need for water conservation. So that is why eight hours restriction was given, that then Chief Minister, the present Prime Minister of India said that farmers need to be compelled to adopt efficient use of water. That is why. But the mandate was that the quality has to be improved. It has to be continuous three-phase power supply with stable voltage. When that was achieved, though, see, opposition was rampant. People were sitting on Dharna for months together. But this was pushed through. And when the people actually realized that this is better, even the farmers find that it is much, much better. Situation become much better with the same set of powers, uh, uh, generation capacity available with us. So everybody come on board. That was one area. And as a result, when we can supply reliable power supply, round the clock three phase power supply, then industrial and other economic activities improve in rural areas. And that increase our consumption and accordingly revenue. Because agriculture is one area where across the country, revenue, I mean, agriculture is not a good revenue source, nowhere in the country. So that is one thing which enabled us to do this quality improvement at the same time, helping uh, economic growth and also increasing our revenue. Now, another significant measure was that uh, tariff petitions, in fact, uh, Timely tariff petition to I mean, regulators, that was one thing. Of course, we were never aggressive in terms of tariff increase. The basic mandate is that we should have just enough money to manage our system. We should have adequate money to invest in improvement of the infrastructure. Generation is one aspect. We, don't, uh, we have a different strategy for generation side. Transmission system and distribution network. We need to keep on strengthening, improving that system so that we can cater to additional requirement that comes from the consumer, growth of demand, that we should be able to meet it. Not only that we should improve upon the reliability of the power supply and Side by side, we also give a very high focus in terms of consumer, supply provider interface. So customer care was, again, a very, very high priority for us so that consumers should be able to have interaction with us. It's free for everybody. In fact, as the managing director of the holding company, having, uh, I mean, overall supervision of the companies, my telephone was available in public domain. If I get a call of some complaints at midnight also, there is no problem. So people are free to call us. That's the case with all our MDs and the senior officials. And whenever there was such problem, I call the chief engineer or the circle in charge. They will be always able to tell me that such and such problem is there. This is being attended. So that is the level of focus that is given. That is, again, helping in the sustainability and our growth of revenue. Then another very important thing was that uh, fuel uh, price and power purchase adjustment formula that was started way back in 2004. Uh, now a formula is approved by the regulators. Every quarter we do the truing up of the fuel cost and power purchase uh, cost. So without increasing the basic tariff, at least, uh, we are able to broadly meet the uh, requirements, I mean like the uh, requirements of our increasing power purchase costs. If the cost comes down, it uh, comes down also, it is a uh, quarterly adjustment. 
So this has been operational for the last 10 years or so, and that helps the utilities in their cash flow and without having one-time shock to the consumers. So this is another thing which uh, had been helping the state sector, and other states are also following it. I think quite a good number of states have adopted similar uh, formula. Then another thing on the generation flight, uh, okay, one thing I'd like to mention is that in terms of investment in the uh, distribution and transmission system, we have been spending around uh, 2,200 uh, uh, crores. That means that uh, 22, 23 billion rupees per year during the past uh, five years. I mean, just for example. And then on the distribution side, it's around 24, 25 billion rupees per year. That is the type of capital investment we put into our system. I mean, again, that is focusing on sustainability in terms of improving the quality. Now, on the generation front, what we did was that state government, normally our utilities uh, don't have that uh, much of money to put in as equity. So we aggressively go for competitive bid to, uh, I mean, from the private sector. So if you look at it, we tied up when the government of India come out with that uh, model competitive bidding document, we were the first uh, to, to adopt it, along with the ultra mega project, the first of the tender. In fact, we went ahead of the, ultra, the first ultra mega power project, which come up in Gujarat itself, that uh, Mundra. In fact, we finalized the uh, tender before that. And those are the things which are reducing our cost and which enable us actually uh, uh, control the increase in tariff. In fact, today, though we are supplying uh, round the clock power supply to all the consumers, I mean, for the last almost 10 years. So, I mean, our cost has not been that high. Ours is not among the highest. It's somewhere in the average when we compare the various tariffs of the uh, various state uh, utilities. Ours is somewhere average or slightly below average. So what I'm mentioning is that uh, if you look at this slide, past 10 years state, uh, we have added around 10,000, 11,000 megawatt of capacity into the kitty. So out of that, uh, 2,500 odd megawatt come from our own state utilities as well as our state sector, I mean PSUs. And 6,000 megawatt come from the private sector. That is how we leverage on the private uh, capital to uh, improve our system. Uh, then central sector share is uh, 2,300. So it's the smallest among these three sector, private sector, half of the total, uh, our own st state sector, a little uh, more than 25%, and uh, central sector, it's about uh, 25%. So that is how uh, these uh, measures were adopted. And as we mentioned here, the costs that we get to these competitive bids have been very low, very competitive. They are still amongst the lowest, amongst the uh, source of power that our economy is goes. Okay. Um, this I have mentioned. So, um, in fact, here, this is actually a, a wrong reflection of that. This includes transmission loss. State transmission utility losses are also there. So, this uh, plus uh, uh, pool losses. So, if you have to minus around 5% from here for overall, uh, our three distribution companies are somewhere around 10% uh, uh, transmission uh, TND loss. Uh, two of them are actually below 10%, uh, and one of the distribution companies still have slightly higher, so that is an area where we need to focus on. So this is what I can share with you, and any more details that uh, any of our esteemed uh, participants here won't like to have, will be happy to have further interaction. Thank you.